The energy efficient U-series processors seem to be forgotten lately in the mini PC space, which is odd as that's where it all started. So while other brands focus on maximum mobile chip performance at high wattages, it's great to see MSI continue focusing on the ultra low power processors introduced by the Intel NUC in 2013. On top of that, the MSI QB NUC has received a completely new design inside and out, which comes with some interesting new features, which we'll go over right after this message. Have you lost a product key on your PC? Easus Keyfinder can recover and back up all product keys on your system. With this app, you can display product keys of Windows, Office, Adobe products, and more. You can also find Wi-Fi codes, browser accounts, and passwords. Try it for free with a link in the video description. MSI's Cubinuck is made from recycled plastic and looks much nicer than the previous generations, giving a more modern business look to its mini PC range, which is the target market. But consumers also benefit with a new high quality build, which is impressively solid with no creaks in the hands and is a step above the previous QB. Another big change is the availability of the latest generation U-series CPUs. Previously, MSI was behind by a generation with its releases, but the QB NUC changes that by bringing in both 13th gen Raptor Lake series options and the current Core 1 series, which is a Raptor Lake refresh and not Meteor Lake, unfortunately. The 13th gen 13MQ and 13MQG QB NUC is not available in Australia as of this video, only the 1M, but the 13 may be available in other regions. I know you'd all prefer coverage of the latest CPU model anyway, and MSI knows this too, and gifted me this mini with Intel's Core 7 150U, the highest end chip available with a QB NUC. This one has 10 cores, 2 power and 8 efficient, with a total of 12 threads. This chip comes with Intel graphics, packing 96 EUs, instead of Arc graphics, like found in the Media Lake CPUs. Newegg is currently selling the MSI QB NUC 1M with this CPU configuration for $650 US dollars bare bones. So you'll need to add your own DDR5 memory up to 5200 MHz, storage and OS. Oh and for that price you get a 3 year warranty. The mini I received is already pre-built with 16GB of DDR5 running at 5200 in dual channel configuration and a 1TB NVMe drive with Windows 11 Pro. Inside the box is a 120 watt power supply, SATA storage expansion cable, external wired power button, and a mono mount. It's nice to see each port is labeled clearly on the QB, so I don't need to go over them in detail. The micro SD card reader is a nice new addition. On the right side, you can connect the external power button and use that to turn on the mini. Very useful when it's behind a monitor or not easily accessible. The back sees quite an upgrade over the previous QB as well. Dual Intel 2.5 Gigabit LAN and Dual Thunderbolt 4. The port with a power plug icon allows you to power the mini with a USB-C monitor and it worked fine with mine. Together with the two HDMI ports, you can run four displays at a maximum of 4K60 each. For wireless, MSI has thrown in the Intel AX211 which is Wi-Fi 6E. The QB NUC 1M performed at the top of the pile when I tested its Bluetooth range with my audio speaker. I also test the Wi-Fi range using the 5G band at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router with an eSports game. This way I can see if there are any ping or network issues which the game client is quick to point out and the QB passed the gaming session without issue. One cool new feature MSI has implemented which I tried out at Computex is the MSI Power Link. With select MSI monitors, you can power on the mini simply by pressing the monitor's power button. This uses HDMI CEC. It's a very useful feature when monitor mounting, but of course requires you to also buy a compatible MSI monitor, which makes it less accessible. It also doesn't solve USB access unless the monitor has a USB hub. This mini uses a rubber feet plus screw design like Intel introduced over a decade ago and makes it easy to open. Once the four screws are up, lift the bottom plate to get access to the board. The plate can be used to attach a 2.5 inch SATA SSD. On top of that, I tested both M.2 slots and I'm happy to report both support full gen 4 speeds. 
The only caveat is that one of them is a 2242 size, which is not as common as a 2280. Still, this is one of the rare minis that allows three storage drives, which is an awesome feature if you need plenty of storage. There's no active cooling underneath the board, so I'll do my 30 minute gaming test to see if the DDR5 memory can keep the same performance without thermal throttling. After 30 minutes, the DDR5 memory topped out at 56C, which isn't even close to being a problem. Windows Zealand Pro is pre-installed on my Cubinuck and comes with this nice wallpaper. There's also MSI software included. In my previous QB review, I mentioned the MSI center was hitting the CPU hard for no reason and using around 25% of its performance, which was nuts. Thankfully, that looks to be fixed and the MSI center barely uses anything. The software can be used to create a recovery drive and it has some other features. I uninstalled it and the Norton trial for this review, so there's no chance of interfering with my benchmarks. Anyway, if you're getting the bare bones, you'll be installing Windows just the way you like it, or if you prefer Linux, you'll be happy to hear Ubuntu worked fine from the USB drive. And now it's time to check out the benchmarks. This is an ultra low power CPU, so don't expect it to be topping the charts. Of course, after saying that, it tops the single core chart. Impressive, very snappy OS performance and a large 18% increase over the previous gen QB. Multicore is where the lack of P-cores and power limit hits home. Still a double digit gain over previous gen. This time, 16%. Geekbench also shows high single core performance and low multi-core, mirroring the Cinebench results. H.264 encoding is much better than previous gen, but still falls short of the AMD Ryzen 5700U and 5800U. I don't have any U-series data for AV1 encoding, but you can see it takes quite a bit longer on the 150U versus the higher end chips. Unfortunately, this CPU does not support hardware AV1 encode. The Gen 4 NVMe drive included in this mini has OK sequential read speeds and the write is maxing out Gen 3. So not too fast by Gen 4 standards, but with a bare bones you can put in whatever drive you like. OK, a new generation plus an upgrade to DDR5 memory should mean good things for the new QB NUC when it comes to integrated graphics. And it sure doesn't disappoint. A ginormous 37% improvement in the DX11 benchmark and a smaller but still impressive 26% in DX12. 3D Mark Steel Nomad shows the Mini holds up well against the 13th generation flagship higher powered processor in the latest graphics benchmark. So what's the takeaway here? Excellent single core, weak multi-core, and pretty good integrated graphics performance. Businesses might want to use the QB NUC for graphic design and video editing. And when it comes to the best performance per watt for 4K video editing, the Intel U-Series wins out due to Intel's excellent QuickSync hardware decoder. While I was surprised in the last QB review how well the Mini handled my 4K video project, the more powerful CPU this time will handle it too, no problem. I haven't tested newer AMD Ryzen U-Series generations, but the 5700U or 5800U started with this project when jumping across the timeline during video playback. Okay, so the boss has left for the day and you're all done with work. Time to fire up a game on the QB NUC before the clock hits 5 p.m. But what can you play? Well, the 1M is substantially faster than the previous mini. Look at these jumps in frame rate. It's doing so well, I just have to throw a AAA game at it. Forza Horizon 5 is easier on the GPU side, but it still has a decent frame rate. Emulation, again, big difference.
And with both these games, it's one of those rare times where the CPU is bottlenecking the integrated graphics. If you're really dedicated, you could lug a Thunderbolt 4 eGPU to work and plug it in for some sweet, sweet frames. This is the QB using an RTX 3070 with a USB-C port, which provides 40 gigabit bandwidth. The nice and simple visual bias returns. Not a lot you can do here, but in advanced power management setup, there's restore after AC power loss, and in wake up events, you can set resume by RTC alarm. Unfortunately, still no custom fan profile here. Okay, now let's check out power draw. Idle power draw is similar between both generations. The maximum power draw has jumped up substantially to 57 watts from the 39 before. So that's confirmation the extra performance doesn't come free. Still, even at 57, the 120 watt power supply is complete overkill. A more compact, lower wattage one would have been nice. The MSI QB NUC no longer runs as cool as it used to. Maximum CPU temperature has shot up over the previous generation as the watts have jumped up. Thermal throttling can kick in at this temp. Fan noise remains unchanged and the QB NUC is still one of the quieter mini PCs around, as you'd hope with a lower power draw. The small heatsink on the OS drive provided with my unit isn't enough to keep the drive temps under control. It peaked at over 90C maximum on the controller, which is too high. Those interested in putting together this mini themselves can add a bigger heatsink for a better result. And that covers all the extensive testing. So let's summarize the findings. MSI's QB NUC has a great new redesign. It looks nicer, feels nicer, and definitely a better quality build overall. A three year warranty is included, which you don't get with the cheaper brands. It's good to see the external power button return, which has been an MSI exclusive. The new power link feature is also a nifty idea, though it only works with select MSI monitors. Performance has shot up substantially over last gen with double digit performance gains, especially on the graphics side of things. The QB NARC 1M supports three storage drives, which is impressive given its size. The port selection is also greatly improved over the previous gen with dual 2.5 gigabit LAN, dual USB 4, and even a micro SD card reader. What's great that fan noise hasn't increased, power draw is up thanks to Intel's Raptor Lake refresh, and the CPU temp has shot up as well. A chunkier cooler would have been welcome. The 120 watt power supply is excessive. A smaller, more compact option would have been ideal. At its price point, it can't compete with the H and other high powered CPU series in performance, but raw performance is not the goal with the QB NUC, and if that's what you're looking for, this is not the mini for you. So, the MSI QB 1M is better in almost every way than its predecessor. If you're after energy efficient computing with excellent single core snappiness that's still able to handle 4K video editing, then this mini is a very competent option while drawing less than 60 watts. Plus, you also get a local 3 year warranty and proper BIOS and driver support, which is worth a lot to some. Okay, it was fun to review a lower powered mini for a change, and if you want to see my MSI booth Computex coverage, that video is right here. Cheers!